Today we're going to be looking at the GNOME edition of Linux Mint 12. Now we've already looked at the LXDE version, so we're going to look at its big sister here. Now I'm running this from, as usual, a USB flash drive, nothing special. And as you will be able to see in the rest of the video, the response is very good. So we'll start with the desktop and as you can see we have three icons on here the first two are shortcuts to directories on the computer and the third is the ubiquitous install icon which allows you to install your operating system to the hard drive now there are two panels with linux mint the top panel up first line of the screen and the bottom panel here so let's start with the top panel in the top left hand corner you'll see this infinity icon and this is the shortcut to the activities area in GNOME 3. So if I just left click on that symbol, you'll see that we have our normal GNOME 3 display. This is very similar to what, for instance, you see in Fedora. So the default display is the number of active windows. As you can see, we've got three active windows on the desktop and we've got two virtual workspaces down here on the right hand side. Now we can also switch to an applications view and you can see here then we can search for our particular application either via these particular categories or we can actually type in the name if we know what we're looking for for instance BAM for Banshee over here on the left hand side of the screen is what's known as the favorites so you can add applications um, so that you can keep all your favorite applications together in a quick launch panel that's easy to get to so by default we have the browser at the top which is Firefox, we have Banshee which is our music player, we have our software center and we have a shortcut to the settings, we have a terminal window and the shell icon is the file manager. So let's go ahead and kick off the software manager from the favorites here. So from here obviously we can browse by category or again we can search for a particular application that we want. So let's try Rhythmbox and here we go here's the rhythm box if we want to install that being based on the Ubuntu build there are plenty of packages out there for installing under Mint so that's the activities area you can also shortcut in and out of the activities area by clicking on the Windows button also known as the option button so toggle on toggle off so along the right hand side of the panel we have a number of icons that are clickable first is a shortcut to Banshee because I've started it, our media player, so again we can change tracks, start, stop, etc. Uh, this next one is the volume, system volume, so we can adjust the volume and change the sound settings. Bluetooth settings if we've got it active. The network, again we can switch it on, switch it off and change the settings. Our battery level, again we can change our power settings when we suspend, etc. Uh, next we have the calendar, so this gives us a shortcut to our scheduling application, which is in fact Evolution. And finally we have our user menu down here. So here we're able to change our chat status from available, unavailable, etc. We can turn our notifications on or off, here, off for instance, or on again. We can set up our accounts, change our system settings, lock the screen, log out and shut down, etc. So that's the top panel in Linux Mint. What about the bottom panel? Coming down again, starting at the left hand side, one of the nice things that Mint has over Fedora and Ubuntu is they've also implemented a main menu. So if we click down here on the menu option, up comes our main menu and we can navigate to our applications by category down here or we can search uh, if we know what it's called. So here we go, here's Bracero. Again, a nice touch is that we've got our favorites listed down the left-hand side, exactly the same favorites that we had in the activities area. So a nice shortcut if we want to get to our favorite applications without having to go and search for them in the menus. The next icon along is the Show Desktop or Minimize Applications. If we just pull all these windows up, if we click on that icon, it will minimize them all away and if we click on it again it will restore them back to their current size so if I just quit out of this particular window you can see I've got a terminal window here I've got a file manager window here and I've got a browser while we're in the browser 
one great thing about Mint is that it comes with everything you need out the box. And just to prove it, we can just come into a website here and play a Flash video without anything externally added into it. Okay, we'll just minimize that. So as you can see, as we minimize our applications, they go down into the bottom panel here. Click them once to display them. Click them again to minimize them back to the bottom panel. Over here on the right hand side of the bottom panel we have the workspace switcher. At the moment you can see we're on workspace 1 and if I click to workspace 2 you can see we haven't got any windows on here. Now if you want to switch windows you can pull up the window, right click in the banner of the window and move to the particular workspace. I'm going to move to the right hand side here. So you can see now when I click on workspace 2 I have my file manager window in it and when I click back on workspace 1 I have my existing two windows, my terminal and browser. It also creates a blank workspace here that I can move stuff into, but uh, we haven't actually got anything in there at the moment. This final icon over here is the alerter, and you can click on here to see if there are any alerts pending from the system. Unfortunately, there aren't at the moment, but uh, let's plug in, say, a USB drive, and we should get an alert once it mounts. There we go. We've got an alert here saying that the file system is mounted. I'm just going to get rid of that and eject it. Obviously, we can move windows around on the desktop. Nice animation. And we can obviously resize them to whatever size we like. The file manager works in standard way. So you double click it to go down into a folder, come back up. You can right click a file and choose from options such as deleting it, renaming it, copying it, etc. If you double click file, if it's runnable, it will actually start the application in which it was created, in which case this is the video. Okay, if you want to create a new icon on the desktop, you can actually just drag it straight on and place it, which is quite nice. If you don't want to drag it straight onto desktop, what you can do is you can take the icon and drag it to the desktop directory and just drop it there. And that will also come out on the desktop here. Obviously, if you decide at a later date you don't want that icon on the desktop, you can delete it or move it to the trash can. One other thing you can do, if you right-click on the, any blank area of the desktop, you have a simple menu that allows you to do things like create a new folder on the desktop, create a new empty document, and change the desktop background, etc. And that is the known release of Linux Mint 12. It's a very nice operating system. It's slick in operation. It comes with virtually everything that you need loaded as standard, so there's no need to go around downloading a lot of applications once you install it. One proviso is that your hardware does need to be reasonably modern. Obviously, the overheads of running it are going to be a lot higher than something like LXDE or XFCE. You'll also need a fair amount of disk space as the installation itself takes up about a gigabyte plus of disk space.